How you doing there, guys? If you're new to the channel, firstly, welcome. If you're coming back and revisiting once again, welcome back, guys. Today, we're going to take a look at Railroad or something I have keenly had my little eye upon for quite some time. These guys have been working on this and sharing with the community for several years now, but I believe they've been working on it for almost half a decade now, and it is almost here, guys. Uh, I think the 15th of December, 2023, it will release in early access. Again, Railroader. They're calling themselves Giraffe Lab LLC as the dev group. And uh, they allowed me to take an early look at this before the early access release on the 15th. So that is what we will do. We will, of course open the game right up, take a look around. I believe there's a bit of a tutorial to get uh, freshened up. And then of course, hopefully I've got planned, you know, several videos of the company being built in the line being developed east and west out of the starting area. But it's gonna be 30 bucks. So I think it's gonna be 29.99. Uh, and it's basically the steam to diesel transitional era so you're going to have steam locomotives primarily and then early diesels i believe the sw1 switcher and the old gp9 now this is an operational focused game while some stuff does look pretty nice and i think some stuff of course needs to be worked on which i'm sure the devs are well aware uh it's it's operation focused so it's sort of like think of it like uh run eight for those of you that know what run eight train sim is but it's set in Appalachia in the 1940s, inspired by none other than Southern Railway's Murphy Branch, which goes through some of the most grueling terrain and geography, hell, east of the Mississippi, probably. Uh, more grueling than the Saluda when it was uh, teething, if you will. But it's going to have freight and passenger operation. You're going to be able to do solo ops, uh, co-op with friends or multiplayer. And then there's also going to be AI trains uh, and dispatching, and you'll be able to dispatch yourself as well. Uh, there's going to be a ABS and CTC signaling systems, um, of course, with you know player-capable dispatch. Uh, customizable rolling stock, as far as your name. Um, I think you can change the colors, but that's a little bit different. We'll get into that later. Uh, company and sandbox mode. So, of course, companies like single player, you'll start that out, start, that out, start your company, uh, build it out as much as you want or as much as you can, do whatever you want with it, or the sandbox, which is just kind of like a free-for-all. This is also built on the Unity engine. So that is the, the same engine that, uh, say, SimRail, those of you may be familiar with SimRail, is built upon the Unity. So it's nice to see something that's not on the same old Unreal engine, which honestly doesn't handle simulators too too well um i'm not sure about the length i've heard it's over 80 miles now um but what you kind of start off with which we'll look at in just a moment um is is a a, a small chunk and then you kind of flesh out your own railroad at your own pace instead of being overwhelmed and i think they went with that decision late uh which was you know in my opinion, a pretty good idea. Instead of just overwhelming you with everything, you're going to be ever able to uh, repair, sell stock, of course, buy stock, and there's a ton. I think there's, my God, there's. I think there's almost, there's almost like twenty. I want to say it's over a dozen choices for locomotives alone. Anyway, enough blibbity blab. Let's go ahead and hop in and take a look at this thing. Alrighty then, guys, I've got it cracked open here. This is what you're greeted with as soon as you uh, double-click the game. <clears throat> Excuse me, frog in my throat. So this is the splash screen where you start off, uh, and it tells you primarily on the right that this is in early access. A lot of areas are not fully fleshed out or filled out yet with a lot of uh, you know assets, buildings, things of that nature, but it's pretty much ready to run. Uh, so it explains that all on the right-hand side. Of course, they have a Discord. Um, I believe you can find the link through the Steam, Valve's Steam, uh, that hosts the game, where you can also wish list it if, if you would like to do so as well. Uh, but we've got help down here. Uh, this has also got links, Discord, YouTube, Steam Community. We'll back that up, and we'll go to Settings and take a peek at that. So this is Graphics. Uh, for full clarity, I am running a 4070 Ti, I've got a 
gosh, I can't even remember what my processor is. I think it's a 5800X AMD, um, 32 gig system RAM. Don't remember the speed. Uh, I've changed it recently um, on Windows 11. And uh, yeah, it's on an SSD as well. So I'm also using 1440p monitors. So it, it picks that up automatically, which is nice. Got it set to full screen quality ultra. Particles are set to standard. You can turn them off as well if you'd like. And then you've got things like draw distance and tree density and detail density. So we'll go ahead and turn these up quite a bit. Um, hell, we'll max them out and see what that's like here. We'll see if I can handle that. And then you've also got your input. So we'll take a look at that. That's your mouse look speed. So we'll go ahead and turn that up a little bit more here. We'll put it to like 1.5. And then we'll look at the features. Um, let's see, sway intensity, compass, always show clock. Yeah, 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 okay. So collect data, that's helpful if you wanna do that. Basically what that's gonna do is if, you know, the devs will be able to see, you know, if there's something going on with the game, uh, they'll get that, that information. They're not gonna be getting your bank account and your social security number or none of that stuff. So I think it's pretty safe to go ahead and take that if you'd like to just kinda backhand, you know, help, help the devs out, if you will. So we'll go ahead and hit back. So you're probably gonna start with single player um, to figure things out. So we'll go ahead and click that, click new game. Here's where you can name your railroad. They've also got a bunch of random uh, railroads. And just for the save file, I will name it, um, ah, we'll name it, try and think of something in the area. We'll name it Amicalola, which is an area, if I can spell, big waterfall. Um, very nice area in North Georgia, right, right on the border of, uh, West North Carolina. So Amicalola Northern, and then we'll do ANRR as the reporting. I think that's how you spell it. Amicalola. Yeah, I think that's it. Anyway. All right. So I've got it set, uh, company mode, or you can do sandbox, of course. And then the map, there's currently only one. So it's East Whittier start. So you're going to kind of start in the middle of the map. And then you can go east, west, there's little branch lines you can connect to, uh, et cetera. So we'll go ahead and change that. I'll put it on one, just so I know where my saves are. And let's fire it up. Here it is loading in. <clears throat> Received a payment of $2,500. So in the top left, I just saw you must get some starting money there. <clears throat> okay. I think it's still, I think some things are still kind of loading in. I've got a locked 60 FPS. That's what I generally lock most games to. We'll see if that continues. Anyway, here's a little tab for the tutorial. It says East Whittier after the flood. So the way that it's set up, which is actually kind of brilliant. The way they set it up is like there was a massive flood. There's a lot of rivers in this area and deep, deep valleys and, and we'll say gorges, not canyons. And these areas do and did flood uh, historically. So they kind of set it up like that. So you got some washouts, some messed up track, uh, some locomotives and rolling stock off the rails, whatnot. It says this yard at East Whittier will be our home for now. It's got a yard that doubles as an interchange with the Atlantic Railway to the east and the engine service facilities, the coal conveyor, water column, and engine shed are more than enough for current needs. So it just tells you how to go through things and get familiar with things. So it says reposition the window. So you can, of course, click the window and take it anywhere you like. We'll put it down here for now. And then we'll hit next. Also, there's a, a tab up here. If you hover the mouse, I know you can't see my mouse, but if you bring your mouse cursor up to the top right, you'll see this tab up here with the time and a bunch of other stuff as well. So that's in case you accidentally close this out. Uh, you can just come back up here and, and pop it back out so you don't lose it forever. Go ahead and hit next. Job briefing. So before we get running on any passengers or freight, we have a few things to attend around the shop. Here's the plan for today. I like the way this was laid out already. Get familiar with the engine and tank on coal and water. Rescue the derailed locomotive, which I think is that off to the left. Uh, order more coal and take the hopper to the interchange. Okay. 
run a passenger train to Whittier and Ella, west of here, and set up your first freight contracts with customers. Let's start by getting familiar with how to look and move around the world. Going to hit next. So one and two. One is your first person cam. So that's currently what we're in right now. Two is your uh, orbit cam. Let's see if we can find our character here. Here he is down on the ground. I like these characters as well. The way they're dressed, got the handkerchief, the old hat, the coveralls. They look dirty. They don't look, you know, goofy like some of the characters tend to look in some Sims. Um, you know, they look pretty decent. So we'll go back to the one cam. You, of course, can jump with the uh, the space bar, which I very much like. I know there's some train sims out there where you can't jump. And I know it seems kind of like like not really purposeful to be able to jump but you know something about you know playing a, a pc game or sim where you just feel like you need to jump with the space bar maybe it's just me i don't know um but you can zoom in as well so we'll look at the engine shed down here that's our uh, our running engine there i believe it's a mogul and then if you click your cursor wheel it'll uh, put the default view back in of course the movement is wasd and then right click to look around. You can hold down shift to run and it is pretty quick, which is nice. I know it's not super realistic, but stuff like this, I'm totally fine with. If I need to get somewhere, I don't wanna, you know, just slowly walk forever and ever to get where I need to go. So I'm very much cool with that. Um, you can hold control to move the overhead camera as well, a bit faster. So it just speeds it up. We'll get back in that view. All right, so that's your camera views. We'll get over here, check out our engine, Amicalola Northern. There it is, it's spelled out on there, very cool. It's a nice looking model, by the way. I don't wanna to get too much into that. I kinda of wanna go through this tutorial and then we'll start looking at stuff like that and going over the sounds and physics and yada yada. So it says, climb aboard. Let's board the engine, which is just outside the engine shed, which we're looking at now. Find the ladder between the engine and the tender. Move forward with W. Uh, at the top of the ladder, find the engineer's seat in the cab, which is obviously on the right-hand side, unless you're in uh, Britain and it's on the left and some of the places, neither here nor there. Click on the engineer's window to open it, and you can lean out the window with E and Q. Okay, cool. So we'll go ahead and run up to it. So you just kind of move against things. There we go, and you automatically walk up. You have the dynamo. Very nice. So I think you just automatically sit. There we go. Very cool. Okay, so you can actually open. I saw this in some other videos. You can open the doors, open the windows. Uh, so we got all that done. You can hit E to lean out, which is very nice. Um, so that's to the right, obviously, and then Q to the left. Now we'll look at the controls. Now, most of you that may be watching this are going to be very familiar with, uh, you know, train or rail sim type controls, but we'll go over it anyway. There's obviously going to be the throttle reverser, um, independent brake, and then the train brake. It tells you all about that, so I'm not going to go through that too, too, too much. The independent brake is essentially for the locomotive itself, the power um, or if you've got something, you know, that you're pulling behind you or pushing that you don't have hooked up via air, you don't need to use the train brake, which is this, because that releases uh, and, and slows down the consist behind you or in front of you as well, if you are connected and, uh, and air it up and all that. The independent, this one here, is just solely for the, uh, the primary locomotive that you're operating. Then, of course, your uh, reverser, which is right here. There we go, you can click it and drag, and then your uh, throttle, which is right there. We'll leave that off for now. So it's just explaining all that. Uh, braking theory, if you will, independent and train brake. Again, I'm not gonna go through all that. You can read it yourself uh, if you decide to pick this up. Talks about the throttle and reverser as well and how you'll need to move it, thinking of it like gears on a bicycle, you know, like a, like a 10 speed or something like that, or heck, even a car. Now it says selecting your engine. Let's look at the engine from the outside. Switch to the overhead cam with two. So we hit that, so we're in the middle of nowhere. So if you hit shift two, it should lock on to your uh, locomotive that you're in or controlling. So there's that. 
Now it says next, control click on the engine. This opens the equipment inspector window or inspector for short. The inspector can be used to view information about the engine and make changes. Okay, so left control and click. All right, we got another pop out, sweet. So they, uh, this is a mogul. Um, obviously they have it named within the game. So each locomotive within the game will have its own kind of classification. This is the, I think it's a G, G16. I thought it said C at first, but I see a little line there. So G16 mogul says the conditions 100%, brake lines at 90, handbrake is released. Uh, it's, you know, it looks like it's ready to run. Equipment sale value $4,725. So you can sell that if you need to. Operation strength crew none currently. Orders manual road and yard. We'll go over more of that later. All right. So it says click the select button in the bottom left corner of the inspector. When an engine is selected, its HUD controls are shown in the bottom left corner of the screen. Close the inspector. All right. So we'll hit select. So now that we've hit select, that means that is now our engine and the HUD controls will appear. So that's on the bottom left down here. You can see um, this is your reverser back and forth. If you look on the bottom left there and then your throttles above that independent on the bottom left and then train brake on the top left. So we'll go ahead and close that window out and we'll hit the next page. HUD controls. Uh, basically, this basically describes this is just another way uh, to use the engine. So you can actually walk, you know, halfway across the map. Well, I don't know about that. Um, but you can walk quite a ways away and control the rolling stock if you need to. You don't have to be in it, per se, which is nice, which is very nice. So it explains all the HUD controls, of course. Uh, we'll go next. That's the brake display. So this is a pretty neat little feature. So if you look at the bottom left, uh, right under the AN and the ANRR, you see these two little dots. That represents your locomotive and whatever you're pulling. So it's the locomotive and the tender, obviously. Now, when they're white, there's no uh, braking being applied. So we'll go ahead and throw on some of the independent brake, and you'll see it turn yellow, kind of gold, and then get darker, darker, orange, 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 and then red. That's just a visual cue telling you uh, how much air you have or you don't have, per se, uh, within the, uh, the rolling stock. So we'll drop that back off so it should turn white. Hit next. So here's the engine controls. Okay, B is bell, whistle. Yeah, headlights. All right, let's start checking that out. First things first, the bell. It sounds pretty good. It's pretty clean sounds, uh, honestly. Of course, now for the whistle, and what's cool about this is you can quill it. So it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of deal. So here it is. That sounds really, really good. They even got a little bit of like a, a almost like a Doppler, like an echo. And then, of course, you can quill it. Very cool. So, so the quill it is uh, shift H. So H and shift H. Check out the headlights. That is your J key. So you've got a dim. So if you got another crew coming at you, you don't want to blind them. Leave it on dim. And then there's your bright. And then if you hit it again, I believe it turns on the rears. If it's got a rear headlight, which this one does not. All right. So now the lights are off. All right, let's see. And then control zero, first person jump to selected car. So that just basically takes your right back inside, which I think you can do uh, with the one key as well. Let's turn that light back on. There we go. Yeah, so there we go. Okay. So it says hit zero now to track your engine. So I believe what that's going to do is just make your, your camera kind of orbit around whatever you're operating. So it says next we'll cover how to top off your water and coal. You can check your fuel and water by hovering the mouse over the tender. So there we go, ANRR 3T. So we got three tons of coal, 2,000 gallons of water. So I think we're going to top those off. Now it talks about setting switches. Um, 
basically tells you how switches work. Um, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but it's going to have us go straight ahead. So we'll go ahead and put this down here. Or we'll put it over there for the time being. And we'll go ahead and hop out. And we'll go throw the switches and make sure we are lined. So this one looks good. So essentially for those that may not be aware, green is lined straight through. If it's red, it's going to be not lined straight through. It's going to be, think of it like a turn, if you will. That one is as well. So we need to go right here. Now this one is not, so we're going to switch that. And we should be perfectly lined up. All right, so let's go ahead and hit the one key, jump back in. That does not work. Let's try the zero. There we go. So the zero key. So if you're far away and you're on foot, you hit the zero numerical key, and that will take you back. So it says, first steps, let's move our engine out of the shed, planning to stop at the water column. Start ringing the bell, give a whistle to blast, uh, open the throttle 10 to 20%, start rolling. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Here we go. All right, I'm going to use the HUD, so we are forward. We do not have any independence, so I'll put a little bit on. I'm going to throw a little bit of throttle on at 8%. We'll just have a listen here. It's got some pretty decent chuff sounds. Holy crap, I just realized that's my character. Um, <laughs> uh, he's standing in the middle of the track, so let's go ahead and move him out of the way here. So we're going to want to pull up the tender to the water spout. That's how we're going to fill up the tender with fresh agua. So we'll go ahead and throw a little independent down. That might do it. Okay, let's see. We'll hit zero to orbit the train. All right, so I think we're pretty much lined up fairly nice here. So it tells you um, basically how to open the cap, um, the water hatch to put water in here. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're going to open the hatch, which is pretty neat. You can actually see water down in there. So these models, I noticed this right away. These models on the stuff like the coal chute, uh, and the water look really nice. These models are, are, are pretty cool looking. They look very uh, era appropriate and very detailed as well. So I believe you actually just drag this thing over. So click it. Uh, yeah, we're not, we're not quite there. So let's go ahead and give her a little bit more juice. Let's see if that works. There it goes. So once you line up and you're close enough, they note uh, in, in the tab here that you don't have to be perfectly lined up. But once you're close enough, uh, that'll do and it'll start its animation. It also notes that it will fill up automatically all the way until it is full. Um, and then it'll kind of complete its animation. You, you will still need to, to put it back where it goes. So we'll go ahead and watch this and finish. We'll click on the uh, the tender here. You can see the water going up 3,240, 3,280, 3,300, and so forth. I believe it goes up to 4,000. So we'll just keep waiting. But yeah, these little models are cool. And I like the way this set up. So it's a little coal gone over here, which of course drops the coal down into the chute, the little conveyor, the elevator, and then up in the back. That's That's pretty neat. And you've actually got a... You know, you've actually got to bring fresh coal in. It's not like this will just sit here with unlimited coal all the time. And look at the inside of the axles. I just noticed that. That's that's some pretty darn nice detail. That looks really good. All right, I believe the water is done. Let's go ahead and click that to stow it. Now it's going to tell us we need to pull forward, of course. 
Water is part of the fuel for these steam locomotives. So you're going to need water, you're going to need coal. So it explains that all here. So we'll go ahead and pull up uh, in front of the coal chute here. We'll just stand underneath it. We'll go ahead and release the Indy. A little bit of throttle. Should be about right there, I want to say. All right, let's see. So you should be able to just click the thing, lower the chute. Hopefully it doesn't dump it all in the cab. And there we go. Very nice. So 3.1 ton, 3.2, and so on. It will continue to fill uh, until either this runs out of coal, which I believe it says it is in this little tab, or you've got enough in the back of your uh, tender there. Uh, I should probably close that water chute or water hatch, water chute hatch. Yep, there it is. So it's completely done. So we're going to lower that or raise it, actually, sorry. So, of course, you're going to need coal and water to keep these things top to keep them moving. So it says there's not enough coal to fill the tender, but we should have plenty for our work. Click the chute to stow it. Let's see about rescuing our other engine derailed in the flooding. So there it is right there. Very cool. Okay, so we'll hit zero and go back in. Or actually, no, we're standing on top of the tender. We'll go ahead and sit down here. So now it's talking about the map. So it says, let's get our bearings. We're stopped in the yard, the engine service lead, a track which runs parallel to the main line, which is the uh, farthest track to the right here. Open the map with M. I like that. No crazy keys or numbers, just M for map. Very nice. And there's your map. So this has pretty much got the entire... And I'm not going to go over a lot of the history today just for tutorial, you know, getting my feet wet purposes. But this is pretty much the entire line from Murphy, uh, North Carolina, or so I thought. It looks like it goes to Andrews there, um, to Asheville, uh, North Carolina. And it's not a terribly long line, but it is very challenging. Um, it had some of the steepest grades east of the Mississippi, even above Saluda at times um, before it had been relayed, uh, just due to things like washouts and uh, you know and groundworks dissipating and making the, the the track and the percentage much steeper than it usually is. So you can see, you know. I'm assuming what's going on with this white is that's what's there. And then the, the kind of grayed out stuff is the stuff you have to buy and or build. Uh, so we'll go back up here because this is where we're currently at, right? Whittier. So it shows us right here. These are our uh, locomotives. This is the derail locomotive number two. I think this is us number three right by the uh, water spout. That's a little branch line goes down to Connolly. Um, and at Governor's Island, Bryson City's up here as well. Of course, it was just called Bryson back in the day. And it goes down, and it's some pretty challenging railroad. It's got a lot of great history. I'm not really going to go over that today. Like I said, it's just for tutorial purposes. So go ahead and pop that back off. Um, so it says the main line runs east to west. Uh, head ends pointed towards the western side of the railroad. We open the map. Um, you can scroll in and out, obviously. You can also do a control T to move um, your camera to the point your mouse is over, enabling you to quickly move across the map. I did not see that. Okay, so we're right here. Let's see. Let's go down to that uh, depot. So let's see. Our mouse is hovering over that. I know you can't see it. Sorry, but my mouse is right by the depot. Control T. Et voila. Very nice. So we're at the depot. We're at the station now. That is cool. So you can move around uh, at will if you need to. It even says Whittier on there. And these look... These look proper, man. These are very, uh, you know, 40s Southern Railway looking. So I like the model on that as well. So let's go ahead and hop back. Let's see if we can just hit zero. Awesome. Okay, so if you hit zero, it's going to go back to the unit that you are loaded in or you are currently operating. Let's go ahead and hit next. So now it says navigating the wreck. Find the derailed engine just a few yards away. Um, it says you can find it on the map. Once you found it, pull ahead of the switch. Uh, reverse the other switch, roll down to the wreck, but not close enough to couple about 20 yards ahead of it. Keep your speed low. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to run forward. So let's see. 
We've got reverser forward. We'll crack the throttle a hair. Drop the independent. A little more juice. All right, and we'll coast. Okay. Let's see, I'm still getting the handle with the uh, the controls here and everything, so we're just gonna hop out. So we need to run up past here, and then I believe. Oh wait, no. What am I doing? We can just back on. Oh, no, no, no. It's over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good. All right. A little more juice. So we're lined up there. So this is the switch we're going to throw once we're past it. By this, uh, like a, uh, a log depot or a sawmill. So we'll go ahead and run up here. Now the particle effect is pretty neat. I did notice that they do change depending upon how, you know, you're burning your coal, obviously how you're running the locomotive, which is neat. You know, the, the particles don't look the best in the world, but the devs, themse the devs themselves um, have noticed and noted that, that, you know, they of course know this as well and they intend to work on it, I believe. Um, We'll go ahead and stop the train there. Let's go ahead and throw that switch. It's got a very nice sound as well. I like the animation. These switch stands look good too. Very detailed little bits and bobs. I like that. The track looks nice as well. And then of course the coupler. That's a that's a good looking coupler. You know, coming from Train Sim Classic mainly, <laughs> where most of our couplers. Or just like purple play-doh that looks pretty darn good i like the uh texturing on it and the color and all that all right so let's go ahead and uh one of the things you can do which is pretty neat is so we can just walk up on this ladder here and just hang off uh you know like a brakeman or whatever like you're doing work in a yard and just uh kind of hang out there so we'll go ahead and throw the reverser backwards we'll peel off the independent brake and reverse three toots <laughs> And I also noticed in the settings, there's no sound control. So I tried to just control the game volume uh, within OBS, which I'm using to record. So hopefully it's not too crazy loud. Um, maybe at some point they'll add that as well, I would hope. I'm not hearing any kind of like, uh, you know, rod rod clanking or anything like that either sadly um you know it'd be nice if that was a thing who knows if that's coming or not again we're just in the tutorial we're not really at any kind of speed um but i'm not really noticing any of it if it's a thing i you know yet again i don't know we'll see you can kind of hear a little clunk and coasting maybe maybe it's a thing where the um you know, some of the the other sounds are kind of overriding some of the others. Yeah, you know, the compressor. Uh, all right, so navigating the wreck. So we found it. So it says re-railing. This engine was a victim of the floodwaters and debris. All of its water and coal are gone. Luckily, it can be repaired, but it'll take some time. Walk along the derailed engine and tender. Uh, hover your mouse over it and hit Shift R. So you can see it is derailed. We're just going to hit shift R. So we've got our mouse on the tender shift R. And so it looks like you have to kind of, you don't just hold down shift R like one time. You got to do it a couple of times and then it should re-rail. Let's go ahead and do the engine itself. And there we go. She's back on the rails. This of course is a 10 wheeler. Uh, couple to couple to the wreck with your engine by reversing. Make sure to keep your speed below five five miles an hour. That's fast, isn't it? I was thinking more like three, <laughs> two. I don't I don't feel safe doing two, in uh, in most of these sims. All right, so peel the Andy off. A little bit of juice.
Ooh, I like the coupling sound. That's nice. That's nice. These models look very good as well. Um, you know, I don't want to naysay them in, in any form or fashion, but they're, you know, they look good enough for what I think the devs are going here, going for here with this, you know, type of sim and it being operationally focused. Uh, I mean, they do look good. Don't get me wrong. They're just, um, I wouldn't say they're like super detailed in terms of the, you know, the, the model or the texture maybe, but they're, you know, they still look really good. Um, you know, all the little bits and bobs, and the hoses and lines, tanks seem to be where they need to be. Uh, the drivers look good. Yeah, I mean, it looks okay. It just it kind of seems like it's on a, a smaller scale than, than some of the stuff you may be used to. Let's think of it like that with, with other sims. I think that's what it is. Um, okay, so we're coupled up here. So it says, um, or it will say that we do not have it hooked with air. Obviously, you can see the hoses are disconnected there. So let's go ahead and hit next. So it says, take it to the shed. With the damaged engine in tow, uh, bring it up past the switch you use in access um, to this track, which is the sawmill lead. Might need to use more throttle to get the wreck up the hill. So there is a little hill up there, which we came down just a moment ago. Um, inside the shed, change to the first person camera and get on the ground between you and the tenant. Okay, we'll worry about once we get in the shed. So we just need to take this thing back to the shed now. So let's go ahead and hop in. There's my character. get over here I do like the sounds though I do think the sounds are pretty pretty decent uh, all things considered get rid of the indie give her a little juice a little chugga lugga all right looks like she's coming with us ten wheelers right behind us I do like the speed as well at which, you know, when the chuff comes out of the stack, you know, it's it's perfectly timed. I know, like, I remember some Sims having an issue with that where it was just always kind of smoking all the time and it wasn't, you know, there was no sink per se. This this looks pretty good. The particles could be, be better, of course, but it looks, you know, pretty good for the time being. And again, I'd like to reiterate, this is in early access, so... We should still be lined. We're obviously slowing down. There's a bit of a grade here. A little more juice. look really nice as well oh okay yep now now we go ahead and coast coast it <laughs> I think we pretty much got up there all right and Andy break and the braking physics that's another thing I'd like to talk about which I think a lot of train sims is is sorely lacking uh, you know, the physics in this feel pretty darn good so far. It's, it's, you know, as far as putting some power down to get your locomotive rolling. Uh, of course, we don't even have a train yet. We're just pulling another engine. Sure, engines are pretty darn heavy on their own. We'll go ahead and throw that switch to line us back up into the shed. That one should be good. We actually came from that way, so we should be able to go right back into the shed there. We'll uh, double check as we go. So let's throw the reverser back. 100%. We're doing small moves, so. Use the brake. A little bit of power. And then, of course, don't forget the lean out thing, which I, of course, did forget. So, 
So now we're leaned out, you can see a little bit better. We're gonna go back past the cold shoot. Yeah, the physics feel nice. It's gonna be really interesting to see what this is gonna be like when we've got an actual train behind us with a little bit of weight. Um, you know, it takes a moment to get going. It doesn't, you know, it's not like a slot car or, uh, you know, like a wind-up toy or something. It doesn't just take off. The brakes as well, using the independent brake. Um, you know, you gotta, like, to get this thing stopped fairly quick, I had to use about half of the available range. Go ahead and start pulling the throttle back. It's going to take us into, we'll call it uh, engine bay number one on the right, I think. And we'll start throwing the Indy on. Yeah, see, that's almost full application of the independent, and it took a second to break, so that feels nice. Very nice indeed. All right, so let's get off. we got to go ahead and repair this thing, I believe. So it says, inside the shed, change to the first person. We did that. Get on the ground between you and the damaged engine and click the coupler. Okay, so we're going to open that. Again, nice sound. I like the sounds. Um... Let's see. Move your engine forward a few yards to leave the damaged engine in the shed. We will do that. So reverse her back forwards, independent brake off. We'll throw about 5 to 7%. Just get her rolling there. And there we go. Independent back on. All right. Now that the wreck is on a repair track, we need to hire a shop worker to get it repaired. So it says, shop crew, open the company window with I, or using the icon in the upper right-hand corner. This is up top right again, if you hover, that appears. Uh, let's see. Gives you the visibility into all sorts of aspects of your railroad. Switch to the Locations tab and find East Whittier Engine Service in the list. Okay, so we'll hit I. Uh, locations. East Whittier Engine Service. There it is. Let's see. Uh, okay, so it shows you where it is, what track it has. Uh, clicking on any of the map pointers, um, map pointer icons, move the camera there. Hovering over the text will highlight those tracks. Number of shop crew and their wages, fuel on hand. So that's everything that it's going to show. It says, presently we have no shop crew. Hire one or two by clicking the hire button. Shop crew work on a daily basis, so our new worker will start work on this engine at midnight. Jeez, tough job. Uh, you can hire more if you want to get the repairs done faster. Keep in mind the crew is still paid even if there isn't any work to do. <laughs> wow. All right, so let's uh, let's hire. So we got hire one. So it's fifteen bucks a day. Uh, time to complete one day and three hours. All right, we'll stick with one. We'll see if it lets us stick with one. I don't think we need this 10-wheeler immediately. Uh, we'll see, but let's double check. East Whittier Engine Service, that's where we're at. Um, okay, I see what it means. So it highlights. Oh, cool. Okay, so when you hover over um, the your little golden arrows there, that's neat. Okay, uh, East Whittier Coal Loader. It also tells you how much coal's in that. Okay, this is very informative. This is very helpful. Um, shop crew tomorrow. Okay, so yeah, today nobody's working. Like I said, he's going to start at midnight. So, all right, good deal. I think we got that set up. We'll hit next. I think we can go ahead and close that. So, way bills tell you where a freight car needs to be delivered to. Most way bills are sent by your customers and you'll be paid when the car is delivered. Such way bills cannot be changed. Way bills are also used on cars that your railroad owns in order uh, to order coal or diesel fuel, as well as for captive service, which we'll cover later. 
An interchange is a designated track, usually a yard, that a railroad uses to interchange cars with another railroad. Okay, interchange is served at uh, 6 a.m. daily. Okay, that's neat. So there's specific times. That's cool. Okay. Uh, the Class 1 railroad takes delivered cars away and delivers incoming cars for your customers. If the interchange is ever full and there are more cars to be delivered, the Class 1 will return later in the day. Okay, very neat. Railroad fuel service. Much of our freight work will be for our customers, but we'll also need to keep our railroad running. And fuel is a big part of that. Your coaling towers and conveyors provide coal for use by engines and it will be up to you to order and deliver the fuel that supplies these. This is called Railroad Fuel Service Freight. We'll say RFS. RFSF. Yeah, I'm not going to remember that. You'll use the cars owned by your railroad for this. Fortunately, we already have a hopper, which is what was down there that we loaded coal off of, which is now empty, of course. Uh, spotted on the conveyor track near where you loaded coal into your tender. Let's use, a, let's use this hopper to order more coal. Okay, open the inspector for the hopper with control click. Okay, so let's run down to the hopper and skip and jump while we're at it. There it is, here's the hopper. All right, control click. Bam, so we have this pop out, so we have opened that. All right, switch to the operations tab, which is over there. Uh, find the loads to an empty to drop down. Okay, that's these. Uh, so it configures where the car is way build to when it's loaded and empty respectively. Make the following settings. Loads to East Whittier control loader. Coal loader. All right. East Whittier coal loader. There we go. Empties to East Whittier interchange. This will immediately set a way build to the interchange because the car is empty. When the hopper is delivered and the interchange is served, it'll be loaded with coal and payment withdrawn. You can view costs on the East Whittier Interchange panel of the Company Locations tab. The return way bill to East Whittier Coal Loader will be automatically set. Okay, so let's just take a peek at that. Uh, okay, I think that's all we need of that presently. All right, let's hit next. All right, viewing way bills. Hit tab to toggle the overlay display. Okay. Orange tag, that's orange. I guess that's orange. Looks more yellowish to me. Maybe maybe my monitor color settings. Uh, the color indicates the east-west position of the location. Hovering your mouse over the label will show another overlay indicating where that location is relative to you. If the tracks are in view, you'll also see the designation tracks highlighted. The car must be on the highlighted portion in order to be considered delivered. Uh, you can also see the waybill information by hovering over the car itself or the inspector's operations tab. Let's move the hopper to the interchange. Start by coupling to the hopper car and the fuel track uh, behind the culling tower. Oh, so this car, obviously. Okay, I thought I was talking about something else for a minute. All right, so it says East Whittier Interchange to Carolina Fuel Co. Very cool. All right, so that's our tag. Let's go hop in this bad boy. All right, we can obviously only go forward. So let's hop out and get us lined up to go pick it up. We're good there. We're going to throw that one. And we should be ready to roll. Control zero back in the engine. Give her a little bit of throttle. Peel the independent. that it takes a minute to get moving like it's just it's not immediate you know
One of the other things I've noticed is the aliasing. I definitely think the aliasing could be a bit better as well. I've said I'm sure the devs uh, are very much well aware of that. Um, maybe we'll get some more options in that department. Uh, for the time being, I went into my NVIDIA control panel and tried to over override or enhance the settings. And it did a hair, um, but things tend to kind of look a little bit more choppy or blurry uh, at a distance. But you can also, you know, up res and stuff like that if you'd like. Let's see. So forward, break off. Let's go ahead and couple up. Some bits of these models look very, very nice, though. All right, we are coupled up. All right, next, connect the brake line. Walk between the engine and the hopper. Each car has a coupler, air hose, and angle cock. The angle cock's valve on the brake line, which needs to be open in order for air to flow through the brake line. All right, let's see. Do a little hippity hop. How, how, how can I reach both of them? Okay, so you just click it. Okay, good deal. So we probably want to go ahead and open. It says you can also shift click on a glad hand to connect the hoses automatically open the angle cocks. Oh, okay. So we'll open that. And then we'll open that. Remember the angle cocks at the front and back of the train must be closed in order to build pressure and release the brakes. If you hear hissing, the angle cock is open, letting brakes out of the line. Yes, I am getting run eight flashbacks, so that is closed, thankfully. Let's double check the tender. Okay, so yeah, we're good to go. I didn't hear any hissing, so that's that's pretty cool. That's you know, that's a bit more in depth, which is neat to see in a train sim, of course. Like I've like I've said a couple times now, I feel like this is the you know, the mid forties version of run eight, essentially. Alright, so we're hooked up, I believe. Let's double check here. I believe we are. All right, we'll hit next. Training a hopper for a coach. Pull the hopper from the fuel track and move it onto the lead track. Throw the switch and pull it back to the yard interchange tracks. If you have tab overlay on, you'll see the tag dim once the car is at its destination. Okay, cool. Forgot I had tab on. Very neat. Okay, okay. So we got to take it. Jeez, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to have to think this one through here for a minute. Uh, lead track. Throw the switch. Pull it back onto the yard interchange tracks. So we're going to have to run back, obviously. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, is there a way I know which track that is? All right, so... Now we could obviously use the train brake, the entire brake if we needed to, right? But it is just one car. So it's still a fairly light train, plus the car is unloaded. So I'm going to try to remain uh, using the independent brake, if at all possible. Man, there's just enough room in there to put a, uh, a gondola back there. All right, independent on. Oh, a little too soon. A little too soon. All right, we'll see if that works. All right. Oh, wait. Oh, it says clear at first, so we're not. We got to move back some more. We've got to move back some more. Okay. I'll just try and throw it as we're rolling back. There we go. All right, so yeah, you got to be a pretty good distance away. All right, so we're going to run back forward. Reverse her forward. Throttle. And to pin it off.
can definitely feel the weight of the extra car. It's not as heavy as the other locomotive, obviously, but... That is our switch there. I believe we can actually use this line. Yeah, we should be able to use this line here. A little bit of Indy. Go ahead and throw that switch. And let us reverse. So it says the tag is supposed to disappear once we get it on the track. So let's see how this works out here. It probably said how you can figure out which track you need or which track you're supposed to go to. But I probably glossed right over it like I sadly do sometimes. All right, let's go have a peek. All right, that was not set, so it's a good thing we did. That one is not either. Let's go ahead and throw that in. Now, can we run around behind there? All right, I believe this is the track. This should be the track. It's one of our coaches. Very cool. Caboose back here as well. Yeah, the models look the models look pretty good, honestly. I I really like the the chassis bits, you know, the trucks, the axles, all that. Um, you know, but the the models themselves could maybe use a bit more. This this box car actually looks pretty good though, but some of the other stuff just looks a little too um, glossy or or something, a little too smooth maybe. You know, if I'm describing it right, it doesn't look bad. I'm you know just just in in the scope of you know, train sim things I've seen over the years. All right, so are we are we on the right track? On move it out onto the lead. Throw the switch and pull it back to the yard interchange tracks. If you have tab overlay open, you'll see the tag dim once the car is at its destination. Huh. This has got to be it, right? Let's see, what track is that? How do you see which track is what? So the main line is out here. We might actually be able to move. Maybe it's this track over here. Okay, so I think I understand it now. I had to kind of skip around a little bit. So the tag is colored, right? It's like the gold orangey color. And I believe once you get it where you need to, it grays out as it just did. Okay, I think I understand now. Alright, so let's go ahead. We're going to push it back um, past the coach and the. Oh, make sure that switch is good. We're going to push it back past the coach and the caboose. So that's what it was. I, I was expecting the tag to just totally disappear. Um, I had to reread that. All right, we'll peel the throttle. We'll leave it right down here at the edge. And start applying some independent. There we go. That ought to give us plenty of room to skirt by. All right, so it says stop your train to find the handbrake wheel on the hopper. So let us do that now. We'll actually hop off the train and have a look first person. All right, up top. Man, they didn't make these things easy to get to back in the day, did they? But I guess they were running across the tops of trains, so it made sense. So we got it clicked. Oh, wait. Okay, yep, it is applied. So let's go ahead and hop out. Uh, let's open the coupler. 
says close the angle Cox so you actually got to drag those it's not a one-click deal I believe uh, open the couplers do, do, do. make sure to close the angle Cox you can leave the angle cock in the open you can leave it in the open this allows the brake line to empty which applies the brakes wait a minute before moving your engine make sure you close its angle oh, okay on our, on my side so we're gonna leave the car side open that way it locks the brakes down I was gonna say that makes sense I'll see I'll, I'll get ahead of myself thinking in terms of like run eight where some stuff like that in run eight's a little bit different it's it's close to proto I guess you could say but let's go ahead and back up see what happens there you go so you can hear the air bleeding uh from the car there so very good the engine's good though all right so it says now you've cut off from the hopper uh use the switches at the far end of the yard to move the front okay let me reread that now that you're cut off use the switches at the far end of the yard to move to the front of the passenger car couple your tender to the passenger car being sure to connect a brake line. Okay, we will skip ahead. I'll save you the operations. All right, we are now lined to go down and pick up our coach down there on the furthest inside track. So we're set in reverse. Go ahead and peel the independent brake. Oh, nice. The, the, the shoes actually move. Okay. Very cool. Okay. Animations are fun. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and apply a bit of power. We'll go ahead and get down there. We got to hook up that coach. Double check our switches. Looks like we're gravy. So I was noticing with the particle effects, when you kind of start out, they don't look the best. But when uh, when I was kind of fast forwarding time for video purposes here, and I started running a pretty decent speed and had it wide open, the particle changes and it does start to look pretty decent. Uh, it's just kind of the, the first bit that, um, you know, probably could use a, a little work. All right, we got it. Okay, let's see. Couple your tender to the car. Make sure to connect the brake line. We'll run a passenger train to Whittier and Ella. All right. Is it Ella or Ella? I think Ella would be two L's. All right, angle Cox closed. We'll go ahead and hook that up. Jump way too far. Holy crap. We'll go ahead and just slowly open this up. Man, even those uh, handles look good, man. The rust, like that stuff, looks so so nice. Little some some of the little details in this game are really uh, surprising. They look good. All right, where's the holy crap? Where's the other one? I can't even see it. There it is. It's way up under there, man. All right, so we should be good. Let's double check the handbrake. All right, so it is already released. Good deal. All right, da, 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 da. we'll run passenger train to Whittier and Ela. All right, with the passenger car coupled and the brake line full, yeah, we should probably go ahead and do an air test here, huh? Uh, release the brake, set the reverser to forward, ring the bell, blow the whistle twice, throttle up, close the throttle as you approach. Okay, so it's telling you how to operate a train. Follow the yard lead to the west, past the sawmill, and come onto the main line which leads to downtown Whittier. It's just under a mile, which is immediately after the Red Water Tower. So we need to go west. Keep an eye out for the white and black W whistle signs or whistle boards. Uh, reminder that the road crossing is ahead. Uh, okay, so we got some running to do. Finally, I guess we're not taking the caboose. That's fine. Let's go ahead and hop back in this bad boy. We should probably set switches on the way out, but... Uh, Let's live dangerously. All right. 
Let's check our gauges here. Man, even those gauges look nice. The the actual faces. There we go. You open this top hatch. Oh, nice. Very cool. Okay. And we are rolling. Oh, did not mean to do that. Let's sit back to the seat. I'm getting too excited. bit more. Let's make sure our coach is back there. So you do have a compass at the top of the screen as well, which is nice. So it obviously tells us that we're heading west. Alright, looks like we're lying through there. Let's reread this again. Follow the yard lead west past the sawmill, come out onto the main line, which leads to downtown Whittier, just under a mile to the station. You hear the engine sounds change, We're building a little bit of speed. I think it's probably safe to go ahead and bring the reverser back a bit. There's a sawmill, which I'm certain is an industry. I mean, that's that's part of the whole point of the game. Is it's all industry based, making money, building your company. I like that. Should be a spring, so we're good. There's some of the lumber cars, the old skellies. Mile post 57. Right, let's give her a little bit more juice. the Y. We continue this way, right? Yeah, okay. Whew. Okay, we're right there for a minute. Go ahead and throttle back some. We're at about 25 mile an hour, which is about the common speed here, of course. So we're stopping just past the tower. Kill the power. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I keep forgetting to hit shift two instead of just two. All right, so we made it. But did we go too far? Let's see. Just set our mile, keep an eye for the whistles, stop the train so the coach is in line with the station. Yeah, we failed. Stop on either track. One whistle blast signifies you've stopped. All right, so let's go ahead and back up here some. To do it, maybe. 
All right, a little bit more. We'll stop just on the other side of the crossing here. I do like the models. They they kind of captured the the time and the era and and the assets fairly well, fairly well. All right, so we're there. We'll give one blast, signify we are stopped. All right, what are your station stop? Hover your mouse over the station agent's window. You'll see the several passengers are traveling to Ella, uh, which is good because that's where the coach is heading. Control click on the passenger car to open its inspector. On the passenger tab, check the box next to Ella. This tells the passengers where this coach is headed, and passengers for Ella will now begin boarding. Once you have enough passengers, whistle off and proceed to Ella just over two miles west. Keep it under 30. Have a few words about speed limits next. Okay, so let's oh, get rid of that. Let's get out here and have a look around. Yeah, so station agent's window. Okay, cool. So you can actually click that. Open window. So it says there's 18 passengers waiting. All right, there were some other commands. So left click of a window. Oh, so it tells you right away. Okay. So let's go ahead and click that. Um, passenger Ella Station. We're going to click that. And I believe that's it. So let's let's reread it here. Control click on the passenger card. Open its inspector. Um, open the passenger tab. Check the box next to Ella. Tells passengers where the coach is headed. Passengers for Ella will now begin boarding. Once you've enough passengers whistle off and proceed all right so we do it looks like we have all 18 on board so if you bring your mouse over um you should be good so let's go let us continue let's get this out of the way Zella down there. Alright, out onto the line. Something else I've noticed is like the shading and the shadow. There seem to be no I don't want to say no, but there seem to be very little shading or shadows. Um, you know, I get that they are intensive uh, as far as performance and things like that, but it would be nice to have at least a slider or an option uh, because it's really present when you look at the trees and some of the grasses. Um, you know, maybe it's there, but it's just a, a case of, you know, the the... The, the kind of distance, the draw distance you have to be before things start uh, their LOD. Like we're alongside the river now. Very nice. Go ahead and pull the reverser back a bit. Fifty-eight. 
All right, so Sazella's at milepost 59.8. Does it keep it under 30? All right, we'll try. like we got a pretty yeah so that's the reason for the speed there a pretty sharp curve the other thing I've noticed is the area so where this area is supposed to be set in uh, extreme Western North Carolina almost into Tennessee is a very not only is it a very pretty area but it's very lush and dense with all kinds of, uh, of different types of flora some of the trees and the vegetation fit um, and some of them do not some give it kind of like a prairie uh, maybe like a, a more western feel uh, I feel like things could be a little bit darker maybe like the ground textures overall and the grasses and some of the trees uh, could definitely use some things like some evergreen trees and things like that uh, just make it a, a bit more green now of course you know in autumn that changes drastically as does winter winter up here you know none of these trees hardly have leaves on them except for of course the evergreen trees which you know hence their name uh, again I know this game is fully operations based but just for the mere fact that where this is supposed to be um, it, it would be nice to see some more appropriate foliage uh, here and there and, and some of the ground textures um, darkened a bit but as far as the terrain, like the actual topography of it all, it does give it a, a very good feel of the area. Uh, and, and this is, I want to say the, the kind of midsection of the line here is actually probably one of the easiest areas of the line. There are some, some large, wide open valleys within this route on the, the Murphy Branch, which this is uh, supposed to be, basically. And then the further south you get, it gets twisty. It's a couple of very steep sections. Um, so it's, you know, it's not crazy mountain pass running, which can get boring, um, you know, in some sims especially. Uh, you know, some of it is pretty wide open as well, so. Check our map, we are almost there. Oh, so we got to back in. Start slowing down. Oh no! Oh no! Wait, so I'm kind of confused. Am I supposed to just. Whoa. <laughs> World loading. There we go. Am I supposed to go to the station? They are going to the Ellis station, right? Wonder if I could just. Yeah, I, I think I boo-booed that, guys. Let's go ahead and back up here. Let's go into the passing track. Okay, forwards, a little bit of juice, independent peeled. There we go, okay.
do like the quilling. Wait a minute, this is the this is the freight house. Wait a second. Oh, cheese and crackers. It was that little thing back there. <laughs> that's that's the station. Oh dear. Hold on. Let's let's break. Let's break. Let's throw the brakes on. All right. So it talks about speed limits. Those are for speed limits. Uh, speed limits on the curves can damage the equipment as well as potentially cause the train to derail ex excessive speeds. Okay. Most of the main line is good for 35 miles an hour, except for noted by yellow speed signs. Signs do not give you much warning, however, so check the map or look ahead. Mainline siding switches are good for 25 or better. Yard industrial and branch switches should be treated at 15. Mainline between Whittier and Ayla is good for 35, though there's one sharp curve that needs to be taken at 30. Okay, so here we go. It goes to the Ella passenger stop. Small station on a single track and siding other tracks beyond white, black, S sign tells you you're close to the station. As you're, yeah, I wish I'd have seen this uh, five minutes ago. <laughs> it pays to pay attention, as they say. Uh, all right, so reverse, back, brakes off, a little bit of juice. Okay, single track sighting. Stop your coach aligned with the station. Okay, I was I was wondering about that. I thought I might have had to uh, back in there. Okay, so you can actually click on this one as well. Boy, that's a small station house, ain't it? I do like the model though. So it says there's 15 passengers waiting inside. They just saw the train go by like, what in the head? Where's that boy going? All right, throw the wall. train break. Oh, release. Too much, too much, too much. And judging by the shadow, that ought to do it there. There it is. Okay. Passengers will automatically begin to disembark. Okay, yep, so looking at that, you can see the number dwindling. Uh, there's now eight on board, seven taking their time. This is the mountains of western North Carolina. They don't get in no hurry about nothing. Uh, open the inspector passenger panel on the coach and check Whittier, but leave the Ella box check box checked. It'll be checked. Oh, it'll be unchecked automatically once they've all disembarked. Okay, yep, so it's unchecked. So let's see. Read that again. Check Whittier, but leave Ella. Checkbox checked. All right, so Whittier. It says Whittier Depot, though. I guess the same thing. Okay, so they're loading. You can see they're loading now. 11 out of 60, 12 out of 60. Okay, all right. I think I'm getting the hang of the passenger bit. Fair passenger fares. Once the passengers have disembarked, you'll be paid for their fares, about a dollar each. <laughs> a message in the upper left announces this. Uh, if you miss it, you can hit tilde or back tick to open the console and review the recent messages. You can also type here to send messages in multiplayer. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. So, Ela Station received... $3 for three fares. Receive passenger ticket fare, $18 for 18 fares. We're rich, guys. We are rich. Uh, passenger service isn't particularly profitable, especially for short distances like this, but longer distance fares pay better. Plus, providing daily passenger service will increase your railroad's reputation, which leads to other benefits. If you want work that pays well, you'll want to run freight. While we let the passenger load here at Ella, let's consider our freight options. So let's go ahead and click that. All right, contract and compulsory. Here at Ella, there are two different types of freight customers. Ella House Track is a compulsory freight service. Compulsory freight is part of your railroad's basic preference uh, in the towns it passes through and serves customers in the area that don't have their own siding, so they would bring them here. Over the next few days, you'll begin to receive such cars for the Ella and Whittier House Tracks. Other examples are freight houses and team tracks. 
Ella Farm Supply is an example of contract freight service. Uh, which, let's see, which how most customers operate. Contracts are set at a specific tier. Each higher tier brings more traffic and up the upper tiers rewards. Contracts have a duration from a few days to a few weeks and are available at different tiers. The tiers are available to you depend on your past performance uh, for that customer. Okay, so the reputation definitely seems to matter. Um, cars for these types of freight are owned by other railroads. Their way bills are assigned automatically and cannot be changed. Note that cars delivered in poor condition pay less. First contract. Here it is. Are we done with the tutorial? I guess. Uh, open the company window. I. Let's see. We'll pop that over there. And change to the locations tab. Find the Ela House track. All right, we are already on location, so we'll go down to Ela. Well, I don't see a Ela house track, see a Ela station. Ela farm supply, I guess it's Ela station. There's Ela house track. So let's see. So if you hover over it, you can see where it is. Right? I think that's how it works. It's got to be one of these over here. Yeah, there you go. So you click on it. And it takes you right to it. So, yeah, it's right up next to the freight house there, which makes sense. Okay. Find Ella Farm Supply. So, that's over here. That's on the other side of the freight house. Okay. All right. So, yeah, you can click these little these little golden arrows, by the way. I know you can't see my mouse again. Sorry. Uh, and that'll take you right to it. Uh, check out Ella Farm Supply and Whittier, Stenzel Manufacturing, Hollowfield Heating Oil. Any of these would be great for his contract to take. Save Whittier Sawmill for after you've learned about captive service cars. You can take as many contracts as you like. At the end of the contract term, you can choose not to renew it. Or if you deliver the cars in a timely manner, you'll be offered the option of taking a higher tier. Take two or three contracts by clicking the Tier 1 button. On the location panel for the customers you want next let's get our passengers back to Whittier and I believe that is where we are going to leave this video for now guys so we kind of got the basics down uh, with our passengers uh, in, in very basic operations in the next video uh, which should hopefully be very soon we will start cracking on and getting on with our actual company here and running some freight switching taking contracts and whatnot this very much is a promising looking game i have always wanted a rail sim that is operations based there's a lot of rail sims out there now that are just glitz and glam kind of and they're you know i like to say a mile wide but an inch deep not to say that this is an inch wide but a mile deep but it's it's operation based so you've got things to do you you essentially can't get bored um, so we'll see what happens so far. So good. Again, thanks to the guys for allowing me to take a look at this early. We will definitely get another video up here shortly, but this is it for now, just to kind of get our gears greased, pun intended, but that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.